What is up, y'all? Welcome back to HRT. I hope your week was swell. If you remember episode 33 with Joey Soloway, then I bet you're going to want to stick around for this episode because this week's guest is Faith Soloway. Faith is the sibling of Joey. Uh, Faith is non-binary. Uh, Faith also helped write for the show Transparent, which is on Amazon Video. <clears throat> Great show. I still highly recommend you give it a watch. Um, Faith wrote all of the music for the last episode and and wrote all the music for a transparent musical, which is hoped to come to Broadway in 2024. Um, so that's really cool. I got to talk to Faith about their transition, uh, what it means to kind of medically transition. And <clears throat> I guess the moral of the story for this episode is questioning everything in your transition, whether it's medical or not, is really important. And that's kind of what I learned from today's episode. Uh, <clears throat> definitely give it a watch. It was a great episode. I'm very, very happy with it. Faith was awesome. Um, and yeah, that's about it. You guys know the spiel. Subscribe to the Patreon. Join the Discord. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, HRT Podcast. I post every single day, most of the time. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Let's go talk to Faith. Appreciate you guys. Bye. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to start by asking you where you're from. I'm originally from Chicago, and I live in Boston right now. Do you and does Joey also live in Boston right now, or no? I can't remember. Joey now Joey lives in LA, LA but right, they right, right. have um, they're working at they're building a house in Provincetown, so they're spending a lot of time on the East Coast. They're um, in between like obligations in New York and stuff. They're they're kind of half half mm. here on the East Coast, or at least a quarter time here. Got you. And you both yeah. grew up in, in Chicago, and now you're in yeah. Boston. How's, how's Boston yeah. treating you as a non-binary person? Uh, g great. You know, I think uh, Boston and Massachusetts is one of the more, you know, liberal accepting bastions of mm -hmm. uh, everything you yeah. know, with uh, all of the schools here and just, right. you know. Um, I, it's also great for me because part of my work is I'm an educator, so... Where the I mean the young people as young as fourth and fifth grade are like entering the oh I'm gonna use, I might use a she them pronoun you know mm -hmm. and I'm I, I'm one of the people the older people in their lives that are you know representing that sort of newer option mm -hmm. um, so I, I feel like the education the teachers basically you know a lot of them have gender curriculums, uh, questioning the binary curriculums already, uh, you know, just having kids who are very indoctrinated into the binary tr starting to uh, see it for themselves, recognize it, and kind of ha have to kind of push away from where their parents are right. uh, at a young age. So that's, uh, that's why it's cool to be, in, you know, just, a, just not, not only in Boston, but just to be in, a, in education. 100% super important to have people who are, you know, in the community to be in front of kids and just letting them know that, you know, there's more yeah. than just the binary. Yeah. Um, yeah. How old are you again? I know you just told me. I'm 59. 59. Nice. And yeah. how far apart are you and Joey? We are 17 months or 17 is it 18? Months? 18 months. 18 months, I believe. A year and a half ish. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is Irish twins, is that, is that a yes. thing? Yeah, is that, okay. Yes, but we're Jewish, so it would be Jewish twins. Gotcha, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> cool, okay. I two, didn't know. two matzo balls served really quickly right after each other. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now, <laughs> have you ever thought about, or are you on hormones as a non-binary person? I am not on hormones. Um, the, the whole thing for me about um, this whole journey is complete questioning every almost every second should i be should i be um in fact just to not to share too much but i should because i feel like it's all part of it like just even just today i started i got on an antidepressant um and i feel like my entire life i've been what the, the gender question has made so many things for me anxiety, depression, all that stuff come, more of that has been illuminated. Like, 
I've been just faking it for so long in all these different areas that, um, you know, at this age, I still, I still am questioning. I, I actually have a boy name I use sometimes for, with my trans friends. My girlfriend calls me by it. You know, I'm right like in that um, 100% n- know that I would have transitioned had I all of the opportunities, understanding, and if it was right there when I was young. Right now, it's, it's, there's, t- it feels like it's, n- I, I'm not there yet. Um, but um, I have a complete jealousy of trans dudes, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I get it. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do too. <laughs> so yeah I'm like it's almost like when you go through something like this as old as I am I feel like that teenager side going oh this is this is me and I know it is me without going I wonder if it is I know it is it's just more all of the the body stuff is um more of the question and the non-binary thing fits for that reason I feel it really fits for a questioning trans person mm. you know well you said that did you say that if you came out maybe earlier in life, you would have medically transitioned? Did I catch that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. If if it was, I think, if I was a six year a six year old right now in twenty twenty four, feeling as much of a, of a boy as I did in the you know in the late sixties, early seventies, um, not to say I would wouldn't have gone through all of the same things that trans people who uh, medically transition go through. It's not like it's, Oh yeah, it's here. I'm going, I'm jumping on the train. <laughs> um, but I think I would have definitely been there quicker mm. doing it for sure. And yeah, it, I, is like the fact that you're older now, is that kind of what stops you from medically transitioning or are you just constantly in question? It's a good, good question. I go through the vanity of it. I go through the, the, the loss of hair of it all um just like cosmetic stuff um i go through i use uh in my singing voice i also play a character who is a woman a cis woman and and i'd like that the opportunity to at some point like see that woman to life um and i um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just am I'm right on that half see half sees. Mm. Enough that enough people in my in my life know that I question it a lot. Yeah. Now a lot of my guests kind of Joey included, I think, want to kind of be in that space of confusion as a non binary person where you go in public mm-hmm. and people don't automatically know your gender. Mm-hmm. Is that the space you feel comfortable in? Um, I do actually. I do. Um, I feel badly for people who feel badly when they think they have misgendered me mm. or or gendered me incorrectly. So examples, I will often get surd. And of course, I like that. Mm-hmm. And then I will get the, oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, you're fine. You were right <laughs> first time. But it's not their fault. You know, right. the service yeah. industry is, is just conditioned for that. And then... Um, it's really cute with the young ones. They're so conditioned to say miss something. So I'm always kind of joking with them. I'm like, do I look like a miss to you? You know, <laughs> really, you know, and they're like, oh, I know, I know. I'm just, you know. Um, so I, I'm one of the people that don't feel badly when I get misgendered. It's just like, it's what it is, what it is. And people in the queer community and the trans community um, always get it. Um, and so just feels like it, it's, more, it's, you know, right. I'm, I'm constantly educating people. Yeah. I mean, like, like bulbing them. Yeah. It's, it it's part of the, part of the bit, I guess. Right. But when, so how long have you been out as non-binary? when did you come out? 2018 ish. Okay. Okay. Now to that, oh, actually right around uh, probably the COVID years. Yeah. Like a lot, you know, a lot of people yeah. <laughs> took that hibernation, <laughs> took that hibernation time and went, yeah. Right. You finally had time yeah. to like reflect and, you know, think about well, it. Well, it was before it, it was it was before that actually. It was before that. It was really one of my younger friends who I've been working with for a long time, uh, like a comedic partner. They call me their um uh 
it's like a like an older friend friend role model uh kind of situation that I've had with them because I've worked with them since they were little and they came out as non non binary, and I'm the one in that that thought they were non binary. Like I said, yeah, I think you might like a little they them, and they were like. Yeah, I think that's true. And then later they said it to me and they said, you know, Faith, you don't have to keep saying you're cis. This was when I was working with Transparent and, and, it, and I was like, it's true. I don't feel it. You know, they, it's like, it's sometimes it takes people to kind of see it in you mm -hmm. that true. are close to you before you see it. That's exactly how it went for me too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? It's, Cause I mean, it's a hard thing to like. I don't know. I don't know the words, but like to, mm -hmm. it's hard to name yourself trans when you haven't, you know, you haven't mm -hmm. even got the, you haven't seen the representation close to you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think my, mm -hmm. it happened to me for my, with my ex-girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend one night was just like, mm. Hey, mm. do you want to be a boy? And I was like, probably. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if I could, <laughs> right. yeah, that's all it takes sometimes. It's just somebody nudging you in the right direction. Uh, yeah. So yeah. 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 I mean, it was, it was, I was such a clear boy when I was little. I mean, was clear boy, clear. And it just like, I transitioned, I feel like I transitioned out of that into like hippie counts, camp counselor, lesbian folk singer, les, you know, like I, it came out as lesbian. We all did. Right. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Not all of us now. <laughs> and then, and then I was like, oh no, I think this is a little bit more, but I was like, I wanted to be David Cassidy. I wanted to, you know, I just, was so clearly, we played games where I was always, the, always the boy, was always the husband. Mm. Anyway, classic story, <laughs> you know. And then just, and you just never, you never put two and two together when you were a kid. Well, no, no, possible, not a, right? no, yeah. you're, no. You're just like, oh well, that just, I, I'm not, so I can't be. Right. I want to be, but I can't. I want to be, but I can't be. That's really what it was. So you came out in COVID. Years, you said right yeah well actually that's wrong i but i did start i had an awareness but i started using they them in, in um covid years so i think the year before does that make sense the year before that i was like huh yeah i don't think that i'm cis like there was a real awareness of that and then i was like but that doesn't mean that i should be using they them really i can feel like i can feel like that with the she and then when I stepped into the education world, that was really like, oh no, I'm I'm going to go into this lane because that is, that is my flag to to carry right now and to be proud of. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, hey, yeah. all this is is just questioning, and it's good to question. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. scary as hell to question your gender identity and just question mm -hmm. your identity in general. But all mm -hmm. this is is just asking questions about yourself. Going through right. emotions. Um, yeah. But in 2018 or around there, uh, mm -hmm. one of your friends kind of yeah. nudged you in that direction to be like, just, yeah. just start questioning it. When yeah. you started questioning it and, you know, kind of coming out to other people or just telling people you were questioning it, how did everyone around you kind of take it? Totally great. I yeah. mean, I, I, I like what people see it in you anyway. You know what I mean? Right. 100%. And kind of. So I guess through Transparent, because you worked mm -hmm. on Transparent, and mm -hmm. your own Transparent, because one of your parents is trans, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see, like, you ever look back? Because I know you, you weren't, you weren't non-binary during the working through Transparent. It was not. Right? right. Do you ever look back onto those times and, like, kind of realize that you were kind of going through the motions? of navigating your own gender identity without even realizing it. Yeah, I was so I was always wanting to sit with the trans people at lunch. Mm -hmm. I was always following trans people around or myself around or whatever it was. Um there would be trans PAs or trans writers or trans not not, not so much the directors because they had their own lane and they were always kind of on their own, but like the extras or or cast members and I was always with them. And I remember somebody one of the assistants or actors saying, oh no, she, they're one of us. Like they're one of us, <laughs> you know, when they were <laughs> like, like talking to somebody else, because like, again, like people would see it in me and I'd be like, yeah, it's probably right. <laughs> and these poor people, these like, like, you know, everybody's so 
sweet about it, but I de- I definitely felt like the the young, new, I don't know I don't know what it's called, right away. It's definitely you know some people can might call it a, the identity as a a chaser, but I wasn't. Mm. It wasn't romantic or sexual attraction. Right. It was more I want to be with you. I want to probably I probably am you. Right. Yeah. That's like, that's like when I was growing up, I had an obsession with Justin Bieber. Right. I thought I uh-huh. was in love with him. I thought, I yeah. thought, I thought that he was like the hottest human alive and that I wanted to be with him in actuality. I, when I came out of trance, I was like, oh no, I just want to be yeah. him. <laughs> right. That's right. the difference. I get that. Yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That was my David Cassidy days too. Right. I thought <laughs> I had a crush on him too. It's really true. <laughs> and Robbie Benson. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's funny what you find out about yourself when you transition. Yeah. Yeah. Um well I mean through uh through all that all the people on the you know, who were working on transparent, were those the people that you talked to the most about your gender? No, I mean I, I really didn't till I, I would say during I would say actually yes now but more when I was writing the musical. Mm. Um because mm-hmm. Joey cast me as Shmuley with a beard. I've, I've always, I'm, I'm always wanting beards. I have apps where I'm, you know, yeah. this beard, that beard, this, I'd like always doing the beard thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so I put on the beard and then I was like, I started to feel like, I don't want to clown this. Like, I don't want to, it to be like, a, well, faith is cis and they're putting on a beard and they're playing a male and I remember very clearly, like, it's like telling people this is actually for me kind of fun and comfortable, and I love the exploration of it. And the trans dudes that were like in the show or on the, sh- you know, working for the show were so like embracing of it. And you know, I was worried about hurting uh, hurting people's feelings by wearing a beard. Mm-hmm. You, is that, if that makes sense? No, you I know, get it. And, yeah, yeah. So. Um, I should send you the pictures uh, at some point. I've got a bunch of pictures of it, but um, yeah. So I forgot the question, Cody, but it was. I basically just asked who who was kind of your biggest supporters back then. Yeah, it was it was like the younger people, the younger people that I was as always that I was like kind of looking for because they were right in the middle of it, mm-hmm. like just just freshly like getting top surgery or really letting me in on oh this is tough because I have to bind here at home I don't have to but then my male roommates or male apartment mates are like giving me funny looks and Mm. um you know so like really hearing the inside story of uh, the male trans experience and and the female trans experience as well 100 percent. you know I felt like privy and I felt really honored that I was in that circle right yeah no um I heard a little bit from Joey, but I kind of want to get your perspective and experience on it. When your parent came out as trans, mm-hmm. how old mm-hmm. how old were you and Joey, by the way? We were adults. I mean, this my my parent came out as trans in her late seventies or mid seventies, I'm not sure. I can't remember. <laughs> um and so it was I remember it was 2013, 2012. Gotcha. So what is that's about 10, 10, 11 years ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, before e- either one of us had any I, any clue about our gender identity, um, but we also we always wondered if my dad was gay. Um, back in the day, they, my dad also my dad uses all pronouns, so um, she would have really like a lot of cool clothes all all the time, like new clothes. Um, really into clothes, had a beard, like. Um, and in talking to her, it's like the way that she could like from some, from other women I've known who were like bearded, like just holding on to the last, I might not be, and I don't want to be, so this is going to force me not to be, which is the beard, the literal beard. <laughs> right, yeah. So that, I, you know, he, he had a, so identified as that beard. That was, that's what was so interesting to me. You know, he, um, she, Yeah. Never would very rarely shave, never clean shaven, always had the beard. So um, I was shocked because of that dumb kind of just physical, like, well, you were, you, you know, you never, you never looked it like the dumb, you know, but it really made sense after a while. So much, so much like hiding and suffering and pain and psychoanalysis and 
uh, clinical depression and, you know, dad's a psychiatrist. And so, you know, going through that young and hearing all of the ways that it's maladaptive and something, you know, right. Anyway. I mean, I actually, you and Joey are the first people to come on who's, whose parent transitioned and like Mm -hmm. where the roles were kind of reversed where everybody comes on here and you know I ask them how their parents took it or I can ask you and Joey you know how did you take your parents transition Mm -hmm. and it sounds like it's kind of the same where from in most cases where like even with my mom you know it was Mm -hmm. at first it was oh but you don't you don't look like a boy I've never seen you as a boy you're all you'll always be my daughter type of thing and then through time it's like okay maybe maybe I do get it the more you know Right. They made the more they start to look back and think about things. Mm. And I think that's like a normal a normal response. Right. Yeah, that everybody kind of gets. Now, yeah. obviously we can see through the show transparent how, you know, things went uh, when your parent transitioned for you and Joey, but I remember asking Joey, you know, like or Joey said, you know, as soon as your parent came out, you both being the very creative people that you are, were like, let's make this a show. Like this is. Yeah. Right away. I I think that's so cool. Well, is it though? (laughs) Should we have spent some time with my parent to get to know them? (laughs) Like, Hey, I mean, we did, we, um, we wanted to make actually a documentary first. I don't know if Joey told you that a musical documentary. Mm. Um, and really like I've always, so, yeah, so I think, you know, but I'll like jump to the past. That's the way I dealt with my lesbian identity here and um, in Boston made a pretty big name for myself, creating these things called schlock operas. Um, and I had a show called Jesus Has Two Mommies where a lesbian is wanting to have a baby, but there's so much hate in the world. I mean, this is this is before gay marriage and everything. So um, God has to come down and tell me the story, a rewrite of the story, which is you know, Mary and Josephine. Mm. So that's how I dealt with that. Like I knew, like I had very safe pockets in Boston where I could express this through comedy. There's a lot of pain and you you go into whatever artistic voice you have to express it. And I think that's what happened with Joey and I, we were just like, this is too big to digest unless we take control of it and give it a narrative and an art expression. Yeah. And and then we'll and then we'll feel it later. <laughs> or as we do it. Everybody yeah. goes through the motions and copes in a different way. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. It happens to two creative people. I I that's that's how I see it going too. You know what I mean? It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense you yeah. made art out of it. Yeah. I think that's dope. Um before I get more into transparent, actually I wanted to ask you when because you wrote all the music for uh the last episode of Transparent, yeah. right? And then yeah. all the music in the the musical as well, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. And so when did you start writing music? When did you know it was kind of your thing? Re- pretty young. I was always the person that was behind the piano for any, any creative uh, journey. So I was in college. Uh, I joined an improv group and I was, you know, writing funny songs then. I was also on stage then. Um I was even with Joey and all my friends, I was, we were making up dumb songs and I was always the person behind the piano writing these songs. I worked at Second City as a, in my twenties, um, in Chicago and got quite an on the job training of how to write quickly and how to score. Um, I started playing piano at six and, um, kind of never left the musical, um, part of, part of myself. Like I I was, I played cello in high school I took jazz. Yeah, it never left. And then, and then, yeah, so music was, was my thing, is my thing. And I still love it. That's awesome. That's a lot of yeah. skills to have. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty lucky and glad because, yeah, I was like finding work directing musicals for kids when I was in Boston. You know, there, it, it's, it's an easy way to make money if you can play the piano and, 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 uh, interpret scores and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Really cool. Now, yeah. uh, you came out as non-binary after Transparent was over, right? Yeah, I think so. 
uh, on paper with the they thems. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's how I look. Like when did when the they thems came along was was definitely post. Uh, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I was still she when I was do, when we did the finale and I was playing the character with the beard, but like pretty uh, trans questioning. Got you. More so, more so weirdly, more so trans questioning, like all the way to the ma- masculine side than non-binary, if that makes sense. No, because Joey kind of said the same things where like, I feel like you both kind of or have leaned more towards the masculine side of, yeah. of the, whatever you call it. Um, But you you were talking earlier about how, you know, um, with your, maybe with your partner, with your close friends, you you mm-hmm. can go by a different name. Now, do you think mm-hmm. if you're comfortable at uh, answering this, of course, yeah. um, do you think non-binary for you is maybe a, a temporary thing and maybe it'll turn into something else or it could be. Yeah, it could. You're going with emotions. I'm going with I, it, it. What's great about the transness, which is so true, which you keep learning every day is there's no one day, one way to, to, to be it and to do it and to reflect it. And, um, yeah, to be seen male by certain people and to understand that for myself, um, is nice. And I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. So will I, we'll see. It's never too late. Just so you know. <laughs> well, do you, how old do you, do you know, what's the oldest person you know who's like, you know, medically, surgically, but hormonally transitioned? Because I don't know many people over 60. Nobody in my personal life, but online, people, you know, I've talked to, I, there's a guy who I've gone back and forth with. He's Daddy Spencer, I think, or something like mm-hmm. that on, on TikTok and Instagram. I think he's mm-hmm. around 70. He's a trans man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had on Aiden Dowling. He's in his 30s, but he was like, I know, like, I talked to like five uh, older trans men in like their 70s, 80s, even, mm-hmm. I think he said off camera or something. But mm-hmm. hey, I mean, it's never too late. I think, mm-hmm. I mean, I think it sucks to have to learn so late in life and, you know, kind of wish you were figured it out right. when you're old, right. when you were younger, but, right. you know, never, never too yeah. late. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what, that's what my trans friends say in, in, in you know, and encourage an encouragement of it. Cause I do get to that. Like, well, it's too late. You know, <laughs> I get that. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think I always try and like, I've had a couple episodes where I've compared, you know, what the difference is between, tra- between transitioning when you're young or older, mm-hmm. and the different obstacles each person has to go through. Mm-hmm. And I think all of the older trans people, um, medically transitioned or not, have always said, you know, that they, because f- I guess the younger generation is always looking. Cause I've always been looking for the older, like where are the older trans people? Where are they? I don't. I haven't seen a lot of mm. them. That was also mm-hmm. before this podcast where I just I wasn't seeing them because I wasn't looking hard enough. I guess, but mm. we're always just like, where are you guys? Like we we want to mm. see older trans people who have mm. figured it out and are successful mm. and are doing it. Mm-hmm. Right, where the older ones are like, we're looking at you guys. We don't know how to mm-hmm. figure this out either. We're looking at you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think it's cool that you know it's just everyone's just learning from each other, and that's why I think trans representation is so important. You know? Yeah. Well, you guys will be like representing a surplus that we don't. You know that the older people don't quite have. Like there will be more. Right. Yeah. So for younger people growing up they will have what you're looking for mm. if that yeah. makes sense that, does, that yeah. makes sense yeah, yeah. you know which just popping into my head um speaking about medically transitioning hormones and whatnot yeah i have had on guests who are non-binary who go on hormones <clears throat> and stop after yeah. six months or a year because that's that's mm-hmm. where they feel comfortable they don't they don't want to look any more masculine than that. They don't want to right. look any more feminine than that too, which is yeah. sometimes people don't think that you can do that. I think a lot of people think, you know, once you go on hormones, mm-hmm. it's, that's how it has to be for life. A journey to, yeah. A journey to that place forever. Yeah. Stop yeah. wherever you feel comfortable too. 
Yeah. Yeah. Again, I think that's where the whole trans community is, is at right now. And, you know, people that have beards and haven't gone on hormones and are keeping, you know, breasts and causing humanity around them to, as I say, kind of look at, at them as optical illusions, like how is this possible? Whereas with more time going by, it, it will be a new kind of norm, right. hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I, want, I meant to ask you before, and we're all over the place, I apologize, there's just so much. No, about. no, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Now, if you're comfortable talking about it, of course, do you experience gender dysphoria as a non-binary person? Yeah. yeah. Now, do you think, what does that kind of look like for you? Is it more like social dysphoria? Or is it more like looking in the mirror type deal? I think it's more looking in the mirror um, than social. Because weirdly, I think I do present my communication a more a, a sort of a, I don't know, a, a more of a masculine, I don't know what the word is. Like I'm pretty comfortable in, um, I'm not trying to change my voice or I'm not trying to change my appearance so much but it, it really is me looking in the mirror sometimes my looking down seeing my breasts when to bind when not to bind the questions I have with myself um or even like sometimes there it's like if you were a full dude you wouldn't be having these kinds of feelings like oh people aren't respecting this because it's coming from a woman mm. that kind of inner it's really more of an inner war mm. than I can feel with other people. Now, do you find that, like, I guess talking about the so more social aspect, I guess, kind of relating to what you just said, like, mm -hmm. do you find in certain situations you're more comfortable identifying? Is it just, like, always, you always want to identify straight in the middle of non-binary or like in some situations like you feel more comfortable identifying more with the masculine role and then sometimes more with the feminine feminine depending on where you are or... well the thing that keeps me in the middle is my is the acting stuff that I do as an educator I'm playing a mom to a character and I'm like oh I'm gonna have to like dress a little femme today for this to kind of carry a little bit more or a lot of kids have butch lesbian moms and I don't have to worry about that. Like, you're like, oh, you look like my aunt or you're like my mom, mm. you know? Um, so it weirdly, like my, my role, I have such a fun job, you know, we go into schools, part of my work aside from composing is going into schools with curriculum, social emotional learning. And so I'm playing different characters or I'm facilitating, but I will go from like playing fifth grade, like young kid, like this or high school kid, uh, you know, always on the butch side. And and I get to tell them my story, the, the kids, because we talk about gender and I, I'm basically telling them everything I'm telling you. Like I felt like a boy when I was little. I wear boys clothes. I would say that I'm kind of in the middle, but probably more like a boy. And they, they get it so easily. It's so fun. And, um, and then, but I have to play these other characters and want to really be able to play the binary sometimes. So that's more what keeps me right in the middle. Yeah. That's honestly hey. when I'm singing too, when I'm singing for a man or for a, a binary man or for a woman, I, I actually have a pretty high voice, and so I can find a, the range. And then it's a little bit of an excuse because I can write for a dude too, and you know I can kind of figure that out. But um, creatively, I think weirdly is what's keeping me from transitioning. I want to be able to have access to both expressions. And I feel sometimes, and I have no idea if this is just bullshit for me or just or justifying but like if I do transition then I will rob myself of that ability to be in both genders now that makes complete sense um, yeah is that bittersweet for you do you yeah think? It, yeah I think so 
Um, I, there was a there was a point when I was younger where I probably would have been like I could see myself. And I don't know if it's the musician versus athlete thing, but I was a pretty good athlete, and I could have been on the swim team or on the softball team or just playing sports. I love that feeling. I love that camaraderie. I chose music and acting. And I bet there's a part of me that if I would have stayed more in, you know, it's all social sometimes, like in that world, that would have sped up the potential to be um, um, transitioning into a more trans mask space. Mm. And the other thing that happened is being a musician, I was always the only like girl presenting in the, in the musician scene, but had a lot of respect because I knew what I was doing. I was pretty talented. I was the leader. And I liked that feeling. I liked that feeling of being like the only woman with all these dudes. If that makes sense. And like empowering, empowering that side of me and for other girls to see that. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think Actually. sports, sports, <laughs> sports were always the hard part for me. I think, mm. I think I said it on last episode or whatever, but I, mm. and I just came to this realization during the last episode that like I always played basketball when I was little. Mm -hmm. I loved it. It was my sport. Mm -hmm. I, then I stopped for a little while. Don't even remember why, but mm. I came back to it and I played, and this was before I was Cody. I came uh -huh. back to it and I was so uncomfortable because I had mm. grown up and I realized, you know, I am not comfortable in my body. Um, and mm. then I played again and realized how uncomfortable I was. And I had no idea why until I mm. recently just realized, oh, it's because I was playing with a bunch of girls and I didn't feel like one. <gasps> Ooh, chills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, it's cool. And I didn't realize yeah. that as a kid when I was playing because kids, you don't always think about those things when you're a kid you're just you know tossing the ball around having a good time with people you're not yeah. looking at gender but yeah yeah and th there's there's times like where I'm like oh I'm so I'm so clearly a dude like I'll just say it to myself like I love that dude alone lone wolf thing eating a sub sandwich by myself and watching tell <laughs> you know not needing not needing people around me just like go away you know like I don't want to process I just at all you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's like the really the, just the simplest things give you gender gender euphoria right like yeah, eating a bowl right. of cereal yeah. hunched over a bowl of cereal watching a youtube video for me that's like yeah, that, that gives yeah, me yeah. man for some reason but there's something about like during the day you'll always see like at least in boston like men going out on their own like sitting in a counter like just eating by themselves yeah. more than women and the, and it's getting it's not so much the case definitely generally generationally it used to be the case but i was i was always like well, that's me <laughs> dude right there that's me I'm you know, and i'll always watch watch sports when nobody else is watching sports and i don't really it's just it's a way of calming myself down like watching football games you know it's like deplorable <laughs> to think about football but it's just like oh yeah, yeah. this is like there's a language here that you know i and it could be the butch a butch lesbian can feel the same way, but yeah. yeah. I mean, like I'll, I'll stare at the TV screen watching football for like 30 seconds and pretend I'm really into it just because it's giving me euphoria. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even like this shit. I don't uh, even get what's yeah. going on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do. I, I, I kind of made, I think I was hanging out with some guys a while ago and I, they got me into it. And like, I had to watch, I had to watch football every Sunday. Didn't even matter who was playing. Like I had to watch it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Whatever does it for you, right? <laughs> I suppose maybe that was like my like beacon, my muse, like da da na 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 na. Here in the background, like here I come. <laughs> da da na na na. <laughs> oh, that's great. <clears throat> uh, um. Okay. So I want to get more into uh, transparent a little bit. Okay. Now <clears throat> I asked Joey this. Uh, but I know that the characters, the main characters, were kind of written after you and Joey a little bit, right? Yeah, they're conglomerates, combinations, right. peel offs, and not, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, not just, it wasn't just like yeah, totally. one one character was Joey, the other one was you. It was yeah. like all of them kind of combined, right? Yeah, I would say even I, I there's there's a lot of there's a lot of me and Shelley and Maura too. 
weirdly. Like I, I was able to write the Shelley stuff really easily. Um, maybe it's just watching my mom a little bit, but I'm feeling that sort of anxious. I think I'm also, I love acting so I can step into that character very easily. Um, I think the whole family is us weirdly, but, um, yeah, I think uh, the three siblings for sure, you know, Joey wrote the first, Joey wrote the pilot. So they really, they saw themselves in Sarah. They saw me as Allie and they and maybe they saw the different men in their lives mm. as um, Josh. And then we started to realize that we were, we were Josh too in certain ways. And, I, I, you know, a little of all of them fused. Yeah. Now, when you watch, I'm assuming you've watched the show back, you know, writing it and everything. <clears throat> um, was that ever just like, like you, you watched it and realized even more about your life that you didn't before, even when you were writing it? Because I can't imagine, like, creating something that, like, was supposed to be kind of my life a little bit, and then, like, watching it come to life, that would just seems so surreal to me. I feel like I would learn a lot from it. I, yeah, I think it's interesting. I think Joey and I both feel like we wrote, not that anyone really wants to be in that Fefferman family, but it was like a, a fantasy of the family that we as dysfunctional as they were, like Mora was trying to have a, it was very important for her to have a relationship with her kids that it was a complicated relationship, but she was trying where we didn't have that um, luxury of getting to know our parent as trans and understanding how it affected us and how um, even post-divorce, if we would have known, you know, how all of the secrets and the ways that my, my parents were trying to do family and trying to do marriage was the imposter syndrome, which makes complete sense. So the show is like a salve. It's like a, it's like a therapy exploration that we didn't get to have Uh, almost a little Brady Bunchy, you know, you know, does that make sense? Uh, Characters just trying. Uh, Yeah. Now I have a question. When who came out first, if you remember, you or Joey? Well, I came out as gay first, and then Joey came out. Uh, I would say as queer and lesbian as well, um, and then Joey came out as non-binary and was using they them and changed their name from their dead name to Joey, and uh, before I did, and um, so we kind of like played ping pong a little bit. As but far as the queer experience, yeah, I was the first like out queer person, and they were queer, and then I claimed the non-binary space. They claimed, yeah, they claimed the non-binary uh, space. Do you right think it. you two kind of like helped each other through your non-binaryness? For sure, for sure, yeah. Cool. Joy was always it was, it was kind of doing that like, come on, you know you are <laughs> kind of thing, like. Yeah, I was really holding I was holding on to the she for like a re, you know that kind of like as most people do probably to say no you can be this and masculine mm. and then I was like oh, this is kind of more of an identity of like really um and, and you know who knows what's going to be happening in the ne- in the next five to ten years if there yeah there are plenty of masculine presenting humans that use she her many you know so very true and 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 coming across as as masculine as possible and so i just don't there's there's a lot i feel like we don't we still don't know yeah and hey not that this is a new concept or anything but like it's obviously not one way to be trans not a new concept but yeah you know not a new concept but it is confusing i think a lot of people who are Mm. in the outside of the community kind of Mm -hmm. They also forget that non-binary people exist and only think about binary trans men and Mm -hmm. uh, binary trans women and think that that's it. And, you Mm -hmm. know, there's so much more that goes into being trans than just, Mm -hmm. I want to be a boy. I want to be a girl. It's not not it. Because, you know, I am a trans man who... I don't wish I was cis. I don't want to be cis. I In the start of my transition, 100%, that is what I craved. But now Mm -hmm. it's like... 
my God's name would I want to be a cis man? <laughs> like that's <laughs> that that ain't for me. And you know, there mm-hmm. are times where I miss things about being feminine. I don't mm-hmm. want to be a girl. I'm not a girl. Never was. Never will be. But that doesn't mean, you know, some things about that era of time. I still mm-hmm. miss things, you know what I mean? Like, and it's mm-hmm. a constant battle of questioning, okay, what does that mean for me though? Like, does that mean mm-hmm. I'm still a boy? Like it, you have to go through the mm-hmm. motions, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the theme of this episode is just question, 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 questioning, questioning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> now, and being okay for you to admit like that there are some things that you miss, you know, yeah. that that's part of it too. I think of course. Yeah. womanhood is very like, there's nothing like it, you know what I mean? Like, those, like that's, mm-hmm. for example, something that I miss is like, you know, mm-hmm. having that bond, I guess. Right. With other, with other women. women. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I want to talk about the finale a little bit of Transparent. Okay. Okay. What was the process of writing all the music for that finale? Because that finale, finale is just, that's, it was amazing. And I want to know oh, how. Oh, thank you, Cody. Of course. Thank I want to know what the uh, yeah. process of. <clears throat> writing all that music was like well I had been I had been writing some of these songs before because I was about in our third season I knew that you know I wanted I was wanted to make it a musical with Joey's Blessings and they very much were like yes and I had started on my own process I like had a Joe's Pub gig where I was writing songs for a potential musical so we had I had some things ready to go and then with our last season getting into um, you know, the unfortunate Jeffrey Tambor stuff um, and him exiting the show, um, which that wasn't, you know, that was that part wasn't unfortunate, but it was it was uh, emotionally just a chaotic time. I can imagine. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, it really worked to it felt very healing to have music as the last thing that we were doing um, mourning, of course, the character of Mora and kind of going internally. So I had to work fast when we decided to do it for television because it's not like musicals live that go for a stage like what I'm doing right now take a long time. So of course I was like, it was really nervous and didn't think it, you know, there's a lot of me that was like, ah, oh, this is too quick, but I just, we just went with it and um, awesome. it was like a really nice way to go out. Yeah. Hey, I mean, with the obstacles that were thrown at you guys with that, I think it was handled yeah. perfectly, if it means anything. like. Uh, thank you, yeah. And hey, I mean, like, I think I said this to Joey as well, like, you could see throughout the whole series of the show, you could see you and Joey and probably everybody else who's working on it, you could see you guys learning as you go. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, and I mm-hmm. think that's, a, that's an important uh, message to send to people as well, because it's like... Mm-hmm you don't have to know everything in order to be, you don't have to know everything Mm -hmm. about the trans community in order to support it and respect it, I guess. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's a learning process for us. It's a learning process for everybody else too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of learning for sure. A lot of learning and holding and hand holding and um, making mistakes and apologizing and, and, and then a lot of like great, Sis Ali Ali Ship, I feel like Amy Landecker um is really an an amazing um ally. You know, a lot of the people a lot of the people on the show use their platform and their power to like go out there and continue supporting uh, the message yeah. after the show. Yeah. You know. Now I know that you've you've written a lot of music about, you know, gender and sexuality and mm-hmm. all the good stuff. Uh, do you think that has been an outlet for you? Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. This is like, as, as you were saying this, I was like, okay, here's another like thing I pigeonholed myself into is I wrote a song, like a parody of um, Joni Mitchell. Is it, is it, I wish I had a river. What's the name of that song? The river or, or Christmas. I don't know what the hell. Give me two seconds. Hold on. Hey B. What's the name of, of the Joni Mitchell song that I parody? River? It's River, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So, um, that's my girlfriend. Um, so, I, 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 you know, 
I have this song and I sing it in a Joni warble and I play piano. And Gender is just sausage casing. We're all twisted up links and still we're tracing our blue and pink DNA. But sausage is also brown and gray. I wish I had a gender I could skate away on. So that's, that's awesome. Like, I have so much. <laughs> Thank you. It goes on and on and on. Oh, I wish I had a pronoun. It's good. Um, it's like, yeah, it's really fun to explore the confusion of it with a Joni Mitchell imitation laminated. <laughs> so, you know, that's like my little high voice that I, I get to really have joy in, in expressing, yeah. expressing that. Yeah. So that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. A little performance. Wow. Yeah. So when you started, you know, and I guess not when you started writing music, but when you started writing, you know, uh, about gender and sexuality, was it, did you find yourself just like automatically, you know, writing and singing about those things before you even realized yourself you were non-binary or did it like, mm, yeah, it show through your music before you even knew it, I guess is what I'm trying to ask. It's a good question. Did it come through my music before I new oh it's too deep for me to answer <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah i didn't i didn't I, write that one in the google doc so you, yeah, you have I a think, pass i think the clowny side of me was always trying to take care of that part of me that was shy which is probably the trans side um always taking care of other people's feelings around my lesbianism because of working with kids and watching kids, you know, so check, kind of having a lot of humor. Yeah, Jesus has two mommies. It's like blatant comedy, but under that comedy, it's like someone who's struggling with being accepted by God, if, you know, if there is a God kind of a thing. So, yeah, the explorations were always there. I'm trying, one of the first songs I wrote when I would, you know, started to believe myself as a, as a, believe in myself as a singer songwriter in Boston was called, it's called the Lesbo song. And cause I, what was, I, I talked to my girlfriend about this. What made, what took me so long to come out, probably true for a lot of people is my internalized homo homophobia. So like, I was like, Oh, I don't want to be that. That's not me. And then I would be like, Oh, that is me. And what are you afraid of? So I had a song, right, I had a song that was, afraid, yeah, afraid of being on the outside is the only answer I could, you know, being otherized, which I was doing to other people because of my fear of being it. It's very, feels like psychologically textbook. But I have a song called The Lesbo Song because I used to make fun of lesbo music, you know, before I came out like, and the chorus is, I like to sing about another side of me because this is my voice and it tends to be free. The only reason it's taken me so long is I don't want to write no lesbo song. <laughs> and then I go into imitating like kind of lesbian music. So I can't even like say it without making fun of myself. And that's, right. I don't know what that is. It answers your question probably like, like I'm poking at my own internalized homophobia, you know? And I, I think that's something that everybody does when they, when they come out as gay or trans, you know, it's, yeah. Those demons you got, and um, yeah, the whole I'm clowning myself before you do too. Right? Yeah, very true. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think when I came out as trans or started questioning my gender, I would, I did the same thing. I would make jokes about mm -hmm. trans people so that other mm -hmm. people couldn't hurt me with it. I guess. Yeah, I forgot yes, that I did yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah. I would use the you know the the T word tranny all the time. And I, uh, yeah. I hate that word. I hate that word. Yeah. If anyone called yeah. me that, I would throw a fit, but like yeah. I used yeah. it because I wanted to weaponize it before anybody else could, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I get that. And everybody, yeah. everybody is, or at least was some point in their life, transphobic, whether you're trans or not. Oh yeah. Everybody. And it's just what you do with that, that matters. You know, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. necessarily blame you for being transphobic. Hypothetical mm -hmm. person over there. 
but I blame you for not working through that, you know, not sitting down mm -hmm. with yourself and challenge your, challenging yourself to think about it or at least talk to a trans person, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is why I think transparent was really important for the trans community because you can see it. Transparent is very raw, I think. It, mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just... How do I put this? It wasn't just like in your face, mm -hmm. respect trans people or. Yeah. Hap, yeah. It was. Victorious you know, stories about trans people, like overcoming yeah. things. Yeah. It yeah. was, it was very raw. Like. Yeah. yeah. And some of the shots and the scenes, it was like, wow. Like, you know, I think, mm -hmm. I think it's like the first scene of the whole show where, you know, every character is sitting down eating like a messy meal and like they have food all over mm -hmm. their face and stuff. It's so mm -hmm. raw. And like, it's mm -hmm. exactly how things would probably go in a family like that. And I don't and know. that, interestingly enough, I don't know if Joey told you that, but they had written so many pilots about an unlikable prota protagonist in a family. The protagonist was a woman, was a, like a cis woman, the mother who wanted to be, you know, do other things aside from being a perfect mom. And here it was, like, that's the, the family that they wrote. And the, uh, the mom or the protagonist is, you know, Mora. And so they still had that, they always knew the style, you know, they were, they're so brilliant with all of that. So they were able to capture that feel that you're talking about. That was one of my favorite parts of the show. Yeah. And the honesty and the rawness is, is on par and baked in with this amazing new frontier of humanity. Um, Showing what trans actually is what it can actually look like what transphobia mm -hmm. actually is not always right. in your face calling you slurs it's sometimes you know right and it comes from the people closest to you sometimes too mm -hmm. so i thought that was really important which kind of brings mm -hmm. me to <clears throat> my next question about trans representation and non-binary representation in the media mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. you were writing for transparent what do you think was biggest message that you wanted to get across with transparent for the world to see about trans people and non-binary people uh, that uh, well i loved when we got into that second season and we're, we're able to go to the magnus hirschfeld um discoveries that it, we, their transness has always been around it's always been here and people have people in power have been suppressing it that the reason why we have we're not accustomed to it as people keep trying to kill it off with laws or with, you know, Nazis in the, in the thirties, but that it, that we will keep growing and, and speaking and um, that it's not so that, and that, and that it's not so uh, this, that it's part of humanity. It's not like this thing over there that it's, right. it's part of all of us was really important. Um, and my, my sibling says like they wanted to make it a safer world for my parent, you know, to walk into. So yeah, more safety, more recognition. There's a lot of trans women that thanked us, you know, I'm it's, it's about their story. They were a trans parent themselves. So, uh, I love that. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. that also, I feel like transparent does a good job at showing that there's, especially towards the end, that there's a lot more of us than, than society thinks too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not so much. We don't have to be looked at as the outcasts anymore because odds are you know a trans person and you don't know it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right, right. Now I want to dive more into uh, Transparent Musical a little bit. Okay. Now, uh, so you wrote all of the music for a Transparent Musical, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. That's all. That's that's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> Good Thank for you. you. Well, that's so well cool. it's a dream, it's a dream come true if we can get it there, you know. Yeah. I want to write as much as I need to in order for it to be right. Now, how do you think what was, you know, the biggest biggest differences to you between writing music for a musical and for a show? You mean for the film and then yes. the stage? Yes. Okay. Sure. Um Actually, like I'm more comfortable writing for stage. So I had a, like somebody who's an amazing songwriter help me to, you know, give it more of a how it could be 
used for film, I suppose. Also, for the film, like there were not nobody was really a singer. That was, that's the other thing. You know, they're not real really professional singers. Aside from like Catherine Hahn could sing, Age Plus can sing a little bit, but not like in the way that musicals right. usually demand. I was so, going to ask because, like, at the end, I was like, "All these people sing! The, oh my god!" They were all singing a little <laughs> bit of like you know tuning in the engineering of it all, but um, they all wanted to, you know, and it's so that was fun. I just, you know, I've been writing for live performance for so long from Second City and on up, and even with my working with youth. And here in Boston doing my work, I've always felt like I can get it there. I might need more help with some of the ideas of making it more complicated with um, what would counterpuntal singing and, you know, just like the, the fancy stuff that gets into um, really good musicals. And four people sing at the same time. They're singing different things like some mm. of the Sondheim stuff, you know. Yeah. That sounds... Um, that was complicated, but it sounds interesting. It, it kind of is. Yeah, it's an interesting thing to learn. Um, but uh, I feel like I've always had like 75% of, of it, and then I just need a little bit more schooling on it. Now, do you think, did you always kind of know that Transparent would make a great musical? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the story is so musical-ish. You know, something happens, the whole family gets... right affected by it and uh was that did you did you know it was going to be a musical like in the beginning I, I know i remember like pitching to joey me and a writer then actually almost were really starting to to work on it as as, as early as like season two uh, and then kind of dropped it and then i just took it took it on on my own I feel like when you know that's your thing, like it's all you can see. Right. Like I could see all of these characters singing um, from their POV. And um, so for me, it wasn't like, uh, prove it to me. It's like, I can, I can feel it and see it where right. some people be, would be like, just leave it in the annals of classic television, yeah. which it could be and should be. But if I weren't, if it weren't my love language, creative love, love language, I wouldn't be pursuing it. Yeah, I get that. Now, do you think the message in the musical, do you think, you know, it sends the same message as uh, the show did? It's slightly different. Uh, the impulse and the message of this show is slightly different because we're in a different uh, stage of, life for the this Pfefferman family where Allie at, at the beginning of our show our musical is knows that there's something going on for them so it's a little, a little bit more like from Allie to Ari and th they know that they've always been off and then Maura comes out and um, it's their relationship it's the family trying to negotiate what happened what was really happening throughout their entire family system and then we've got a little bit of germany and berlin mm -hmm. fantastical stuff mm -hmm. time travel in there wow um and it yeah. is hoped to come to broadway in 2024 that's the hope. Right? Yeah. that's the hope it will be you can say and i'm going yeah. and i'm excited <laughs> oh good good uh <clears throat> now what was it like working with all those talented people on the musical <sighs> incredible i mean incredible that's how that's how I I when I had these people singing the music that had been in a lot of Broadway shows and stuff and them a couple of them saying this is amazing this is great this is the best role I've ever had this is um you know that was the affirmation that I needed because of course I'm like every time I sit down to write a song I go for the musical I go into my own panic attack of oh my god like is this is this good enough is this good enough is this good enough and they they've been thankfully really affirming that's awesome. that it's good enough that's yeah awesome. that's i mean it's all you need really yeah and you think it gets easier with time like every time i sit in, on in this desk and 
prepare to shoot a new episode, you think after, you know, almost 40 episodes that that panic would go away that like, is this one going to yeah. be good enough? But it never does. It yeah. never, yeah. never right. goes away. Yeah. yeah. I, I say that to Max every single time I sit down. I'm like, you think yeah. this would get easier? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. But at least your belief of like, okay, I've done it. I can do it. Yeah. True. I've done these other episodes. I know what I'm doing. Very true. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what's next for you? And what do you want people to kind of know about? I'm, um, I mean, I would love, to, of course, this musical to go. And for some reason, if it doesn't, but it will. Uh, manifest. Just, it will. Manifest, manifest. <laughs> um, create more. I have some more ideas. I work with my partner. Um, her name is Bitch. She, she's a performing artist. Um, yeah, and she's great. So we have some stuff we're working on. And I love that I'm able to educate young people on gender Very specifically. Important. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things we educate them on. And it's really about community and empathy and, and how to deal with big emotions and all that stuff that everyone's trying to, you know, get behind and accepting mental health as being as important as physical health. And, um, but yeah, I just hope, you know, I'm getting up there in age and I just want to be able to create and be vibrant with community as much that. as possible. Period. Yeah. And I've got a, a, a 21 year old, 20, about to be 22 year old daughter. That's, you know, just watching her in the world. I love that. And yeah. It's nice to see, uh, you know, somebody in the community who works with kids, works with youth and mm -hmm. as a child of their own and being successful yeah. and just doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's cool. My, my, my daughter calls me Papa Tay. My nickname is Tay Tay. So I love that. Yeah. They, it, it, she kind of sees it, you know, and calls me dad and Papa and it's really cute. That is cute. So, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Now, um, I'm kind of started this new thing at the end of my episodes where I kind of want to change the narrative of, uh, what Matt Walsh was trying to do, uh, when he, you know, went around asking a bunch of people, you mm. know, what does it mean to be a woman and stuff like that, obviously mm -hmm. coming from mm -hmm. a very ignorant and transphobic mm -hmm. place, I would mm -hmm. like to change that narrative of that and ask, in a more, what does being a woman, what does being a man, what does being non-binary mean to you? And as mm -hmm. a non-binary person, what does mm -hmm. being non-binary mean to you? Yeah, it means getting to express and live in this space that's right between gender expectations and 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 uh, yeah, it feels like a privilege even though the world doesn't treat it that way. It does feel like a privilege. I love that. I love that a lot. Actually, I feel like I've tried to say that but it never came out right. Mm -hmm. And it it feels like a privilege to be trans 100% even mm -hmm. though the rest of the world doesn't see it that way. Oh, mm -hmm. beautiful beautiful oh good i love okay. that <laughs> good yeah 100 percent. i think you know obviously again not a new concept but there's no one way to be non-binary there's no one way to be right. trans and yeah and to just question question everything. yes yeah 100 percent. yeah agree. now uh, i also do a thing at the end of my episode called trans song of the week do you have mm -hmm. a song that sticks out to you, even if it's one of your own, or that doesn't necessarily have to be about being trans? Could just also be by mm -hmm. a trans artist that sticks out to you. Uh, do you know John Allison Weiss? I know the name. I think. Yeah, he's got great songs. He has a song called "Dust Storm." Rode out the high, rode out the highway in the dust storm. I can't remember all the lyrics. Follow, follow him. Um, yeah. I will. That yeah, will, and Mal Bloom. Do you know Mal Bloom? I do not. I, don't I mean, think so. okay. There's some great trans mask songwriters, but yeah, I will put both of those people John, in John the Elson, description. John Elson Weiss. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. They'll be in the description below for anybody who wants to check them out. I think it's important yeah. to uh, give a voice and a, a, you know, give. I guess yeah, give a voice to trans creators, no matter what they're doing. So. Yeah, and my girlfriend bitch is a that is a she they, um, she's she's in there in the she's a to me an original gender warrior, um, and she's following bitches is great too. Hell yeah, description below. Hell yeah. check it out. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
that is it for this episode, guys. I appreciate everyone who listened slash watched. Um, Faith, thank you so much for being on. This was great. Thanks, Cody. It was really fun. Of course. Uh, now I would like to ask you where people can follow you. Uh, they can follow me on Instagram, Faith Soloway. Cool. And my my uh, partner and I are starting a a faux f a u x uh, feminist lesbian band called One Long Earring. So we're trying. <laughs> trying to get that going again <laughs> that's um, awesome. it's like a, it's a lesbian spinal tap basically it's mm. like you know so that's when i say like oh this is hard for me to like totally jump like do hormones change my voice because there's a there's a character that i really do want to elevate at some point mm. that's a great name um, <laughs> thank, you. That name. thank you yeah you can look on one long earring for some of our creations tell you yeah again description yeah. below i'll plug it 100%. yeah um yeah so follow faith on instagram and make sure you follow me at hrt podcast on tiktok and instagram i post every single day uh subscribe to me on patreon i have uh bonus content from past episodes coming out so make sure you check that out discord join the discord where we have a great little family in there i highly recommend it uh subscribe to me on here i post videos every tuesday and that is it for today Faith, again, thank you so much for being on today. This was a great Thanks, episode. Cody. Of course. Yeah. I will catch you guys next week. Bye.